The Loka Totur means Loki's tale, and it was told in the Faroe Islands as a ballad and fairy tale. And the Faroe Islands are located between Scotland and Iceland and a part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Well, this ballad or tale is interesting as it is a rare occurrence of Norse gods in folklore and doubly so because this tale is post-Christian conversion. But it also stands out because Loki is playing the role of a benevolent god, a good god. Um, the ballad itself became part of a collection written in the mid-20th century across six books known as the Corpus Carminum Faronsium uh, 13D, uh, which initially included 236 works, of which only 175 uh, now were recognised as medieval ballads from Scandinavia. The ballad itself has two parts. The first part is about a farmer who loses a bet with a giant over a game of chess. And that is known as Skrimsla. And the giant is called Skrimsli. And that's the first ballad. In the second part, which I'm going to read here and talk about in the Loka Totur, the giant is known as Skrimir. Now, for those who watched the first Loki video in this sort of Loki series, you'll know that Loki could also be considered as the same creature as Skrymir at the castle of Utgartha. Now, the fact that Loki and Skrymir uh, now appear as two different characters in the same story may cause some confusion, and it may be because of how late the ballad was written, and being post-Christian, authors may not have understood the link to Utgartha Loki and the previous identity, uh, as the name Skrimir can also mean take up a lot of space, based on Middle Age Danish. And so perhaps Skrimir was chosen because it's a generic giant name. So anyway, this ballad is based on uh, the actions of the giant after it wins the bet in the first tale, as winning the bet means he seems to be owed the father's son. And the plot describes how the farmer asks for the help of gods to ask his son. And the three gods involved are Odin, Hrnir and Loki, a trio that appear a few times in Scandinavian tales. And it also reinforces the fact of stories of when Loki appeared that Loki and Odin were friends. I've left out in this the ballad's chorus, otherwise that would double the length of the story uh, and it wouldn't really flow right. It offers very little benefit. And I'll include the translation I've done and, and the restructure I've done on the Quick and Fall Facebook page if anybody wants to read it. Uh, it's a typical type of fairy tale with three attempts at doing a deed. Uh, the first two failed, the third one succeeds with good triumphing over evil if you consider Loki good, which some people don't. So uh, anyway, welcome to Loki's Tale from the Faroe Islands and welcome to Quick and Fall. The farmer and the giant were playing a game, and the giant won and the farmer lost. Why does playing the harp fill me with sadness? Why does no one want to follow me anymore? The giant said, A bet is a bet, and I have won, and now pay up, I want your son. I want that son of yours, you must not hide him from me. The farmer says to his wife, Ask Odin to come here for me. Please summon Odin, the king of the Asir, for he can hide my son until this passes. I wish Odin was here and would tell me that he would hide my son. And before he could say another word, Odin was there, stood at the table. Odin, said the farmer, I hope you heard me. Please, I beg you, please hide my son. Odin took the boy with him. And the farmer and his wife began to worry about what would happen to their son. Odin took the boy into a field of corn and cast a spell on him, so that the boy would look as though he was an ear of corn in that field. And then Odin commanded the field of corn to grow and grow fast in just one night to help hide the boy. The boy became an ear of corn in the middle of a field of corn, which he blended in with all the years around him. And Odin said, Stay still, and it will not be a problem. 
And when I call you, you must remember to come to me. Remember, stay still. There's nothing to worry about. When I call you, though, you must come to me. But this giant had a cold, hard heart. And he goes to the field and grasps an armful of corn. And within that armful of corn, he picks up the ear that is the boy. The boy looks and sees the giant is carrying a sharp sword in his hand. And with the sharp sword, the giant probably wants to chop the boy up into pieces. The farmer's boy is so scared, he wants to escape. And by luck, that ear of corn that is the boy slips out of the giant's grasp and onto the ground. And the boy, now free, hears Odin. And Odin turns him back into the boy and tells the boy to follow him to get home. And so the boy gets home and the farmer and his wife greets them. And Odin says, Here's your young son. Now I'm done hiding him. The farmer says to his wife, Pray Honir comes to help me. I want Honir to come and to tell me how to hide the boy. Before he had said another word, Honir was stood at their table. Do you hear me, Honir? The farmer said, I beg you, you must hide my son from the giant. Honir took the boy with him and the farmer and his wife grieved deeply for they were so worried. Honir walked across the green fields and saw seven swans flying across the bay. To the east flew more swans and they landed by Honir. So Honir cast a spell on the boy and turned him into a feather which he placed in the middle of a swan's head. Now lie there, Honir said, without getting into trouble. But when I call, come to me. Now lie there without fear. And remember, when I call, come to me. The giant leapt out onto the green grove and seven swans flew across the sound. The giant then fell to his knees and there he got hold of one of the swans and he bit the neck of the swan, tore his neck off the body of the swan and the swan's feathers were left in his mouth. The boy was scared and as the feather he slipped out of the giant's mouth and the boy was free. And Honir changed him back into a boy and said, follow me back home. And the farmer and wife then greeted them. And Honir said, here is your young son. Now I'm done hiding him. The farmer says to his wife, ask Loki to step in for me. I want Loki to come and tell me how the boy should be saved. Before they said a word, Loki was stood at the table. You have no idea how worried I am. The beast will kill my son. Do you hear me, Loki? I beg you, you must hide my son from me. Hide him as best you can. Don't let the beast catch him. Loki replied, If I have to hide this son of yours, then you must meet my conditions. You have to build a boathouse whilst I am away. You have to put a wide window in it and put an iron bar across the middle of that window. The farmer agreed to build the boathouse and Loki took the boy with him, and the farmer and his wife grieved deeply. Loki walked across the sandy beach, where a boat lay on the shore, and Loki rowed out to the outer sandbanks, where fish were schooling, or so it is said in the old sources. Loki didn't say any more, but he throws a fishing line weighted with stones, and with the hook tied on. And he throws it overboard, and he drags it gently along the bottom. And he pulls out a halibut. He catches one, he catches two, and then the third one he catches looks like a female that's carrying eggs. So Loki now commands the boy to become an egg in the halibut's row, lie in there without getting in trouble. And when I call, come to me, lie in it without fear. But when I call, remember, you must come to me. Then Loki heads back to the shore. And the giant is there waiting for him on the sand. The giant immediately said, Loki, where have you been tonight? And Loki replied, I have no peace of mind. I sailed and drifted all over the seas. The giant pushed the boat 
back into the sea. And Loki shouts that the waves are dangerous and suggests that he should go with the giant, just for safety. And so the giant took the tiller in his hand and Loki starts rowing from the shore. Loki looks as though he's rowing so hard that he should have covered a long distance, but the rowboat hasn't moved. And Loki swears by his faith, I can steer this boat better than you. And so the giant sits down to row and he rows the boat at speed across the sea. The giant rowed a long way and Loki stayed at the stern of the boat steering it this way and that until the giant roared and so Loki steered towards the outer bank, the sand bank. Well that's what it says in the old sources. The giant doesn't say anything but he throws a fishing line overboard, tied on with stones to weigh it down with a hook at the end. And he pulls his fishing hook along the bottom of the sea. And he catches a halibut. But not one, not two, but three. And the third one looks like it was carrying eggs. Loki is cursing his luck. Gosh, give me this fish! The giant answered and said, no, dear Loki. You won't get it. The giant put the fish between his knees and counted every egg. Every egg in the fish's row as he wanted to catch that boy. And then as an egg, the boy was scared and he as an egg managed to slip out of the giant's hand. But the boy was in trouble. They were all in the boat. And Loki quickly changed him back to a boy and says, Sit down behind me. Don't let the giant see you. And when you get to shore, you have to jump lightly onto land so that you do not leave traces in the sand. The giant looks up. He hasn't found the boy and rows back to the land, straight towards the white sand. Then as they get to land, Loki turns away from the rowboat and the giant pulls the boat onto land and the boy jumps as easily and lightly onto the sand as he can. And the giant looks up. And he sees the boy standing before him on the sand. But the boy has jumped easily and lightly and has left no trace. And the giant jumps towards him, but so heavy is he, he sinks to his knees. And this gives the boy a chance to run towards the boathouse. He runs as fast as he could. That boathouse built on Loki's request. He runs through his father's boathouse, but the by now the giant has escaped the sand and he's feeling confident he can catch the boy. The giant jumps through the window. His head smashes against the iron bar placed across the window and he is stuck. Then, as quick as a flash, Loki cut off the giant's leg and the giant laughed as his wound healed immediately. Then Loki quick chopped off the other giant's leg. And then he cut the first leg again and put a stick and a stone in between them to stop them healing. The boy smiled, thinking it was funny to see how the giant's legs had been cut. And now not able to walk and bleeding, the giant bleeds to death. And so Loki followed the boy home and the farmer and wife welcomed them. Here, have your young son. Now I'm done hiding him. I've kept my word to you, and now the giant has lost its life. And there ends the story of Loki's tale, where Loki is a god that does good, that saves a boy from a giant. I hope you're well, and you're staying safe, and you enjoyed Loki's tale. And this was Crackenford.